In this video, we are going to give you a brief introduction to WordBlocks. WordBlocks is the main programming language for Spike Prime. Each program command is a puzzle-shaped piece that gets connected vertically with other blocks similar to a jigsaw puzzle. The software is based on Scratch and is therefore easy to learn for younger students. We have been receiving numerous requests from rookie teams for help with programming, so we decided to create this short overview of the Spike Prime software and the blocks we find the most useful. Since the Spike Legacy app is going to be phased out eventually, we decided to show instructions that will work in either Spike Legacy or Spike App 3 up to the latest versions. All steps are shown in the Spike App version 3. Keep this in mind when connecting to the hub. LEGO Education provides detailed information on Spike Prime and WordBlocks online on its website, education.lego.com. Scroll to the bottom of the homepage to find the link for downloading the software. After you click the download link, select LEGO Education Spike Prime software from the options that are presented. Click on the download button and follow the instructions to install the software on your computer. Once the app is installed, start it from the Windows Start menu or by double-clicking the Spike app icon on your desktop. When you start the Spike app, it will ask you to select the Spike platform you want to program. Select the Spike Prime on the right side to get to the home screen. Before we dive into programming, let's take a look at one of the settings for the software which might be useful for some of you. The link to the settings is on the bottom left of the screen. Did you know that the Spike Prime app is available in over 20 languages? Click on the language icon, and you will be presented with a list of different languages that the app supports. Choose which one you want to use and then return to the home page. From here you can select the building instructions where you can find the instructions to build the advanced driving base and attachments we use for our individual mission solutions. Any projects previously created in Spike Legacy app will be shown as shortcuts. If you are starting a new project, click on New Project. On the New Project screen, you will be asked to select if you want to use icon blocks, word blocks, or Python. Before you select word blocks, take a moment to rename your project. After selecting WordBlocks as your programming language, you will see the WordBlocks programming canvas. Now would be a good time to power up your Spike Prime robot and connect it to the app by clicking the yellow connect button with the hub icon in the top left of the programming canvas. With Spike App 3 and newer, at this step the app will ask you to confirm that the hub has been updated to work with Spike App 3 by selecting the color of your power button. If your hub is updated, it should be green. If you are still using the Spike Legacy app, your power button should light up white. After confirming your hub OS as being Spike 3 by clicking the green power button option, follow the instructions to switch on the hub and Bluetooth. If your hub was connected to the computer before, it should show up on the right side where you can now click the blue connect button. Once you are connected, you will see your hub status in the top left area of the programming canvas. A connected hub will show a blue circle and the status of any connected motors or sensors next to it. Clicking on the hub icon will open the hub dashboard. On the hub dashboard you will see the name of the hub that is currently connected to the app, the hub OS installed, and the battery charge level. Furthermore, you will see a depiction of your hub and which ports have motors or sensors connected with their respective status. Above the hub picture you will see a line that shows the current reading for the yaw, pitch, and roll sensors built into the brick. We will get more into these sensors later on in the video. Let's take a closer look at the programming canvas. In the top left corner you have the home button to return to the home page. And you can see any projects that are currently open as individual tabs. On the bottom left of the programming canvas you have buttons to adjust the zoom level as well as undo and redo buttons. On the bottom right you can select which program you want to work on. From here you can also start and stop programs. WordBlocks uses 10 different programming block categories. Along the left side of the programming canvas, you have a quick access bar. Click on one of the colored dots representing the different categories to view the different blocks available within that category. The darker blue category is the motors category. Some blocks are more useful than others. For our programming, we typically use the block that runs the selected motors in a given direction for a given amount of rotation, degrees, or seconds. The other motor category block we use most often sets the motor speed for a given motor. The pink category is called the movement category. For our programming, we typically use what we call the move steering block, which moves the robot in a selected steering severity for a specific amount of rotations, degrees, seconds, centimeters, or inches. Another useful movement block is the one to set a specific movement speed. 
At the beginning of the program, you want to use the block for assigning the movement motors to selected ports. A very common misconception is made when using what we call the move steering block. Putting a value into the oval steering value field does not turn the robot that many degrees. When you click into the variable field, you will see a depiction of a steering wheel that will show you how severe your turn will be and in which direction. We are showing five examples for going straight and right turns with explanations of what these blocks will make the robot do. Please pause if you want to read them. Keep in mind that any positive number between 0 and 100 will make the robot turn to the right and changing the variable to a negative number will change what the motors do to the opposite and will make the robot turn left. The example blocks on the top of the screen will make the robot turn forever, so you will have to specify before at what speed you want to make the robot turn and how much you want the robot to turn. At the bottom, we are showing you another version of the move steering block in which you can define the number of wheel rotations in the same block. Instead of rotations, you could also choose centimeters, inches, motor rotation degrees, or seconds. Be careful that time-based driving might have different results based on battery charge levels. The light and dark purple categories are the light and sounds group. We will not address these two categories as they add little value to programming for first LEGO League Challenge applications. Feel free to explore and experiment with the light display on the robot or the sounds that the robot can play. The yellow blocks make up the events category. The most commonly used event blocks include the default program start block, conditional start blocks, and command blocks that can be used to trigger a parallel action while continuing or suspending the current program. The orange blocks make up the control category. The most commonly used control blocks are for interrupting a program, creating loops through repetition of blocks, making the program repeat blocks or wait until a condition is met, adding if-else conditions, or stopping the current program or branch. The aqua blue blocks make up the sensors category. Although we have a color sensor on our robot, we rarely use it. Instead, we heavily rely on the built-in gyro sensor in the Spike Prime brick. The two most useful blocks for first LEGO League from the sensors category are probably the blocks that use the angle sensor value as an input for other blocks as well as the blocks for resetting the angle sensor to zero. The green blocks are from the operators category. Unlike the blocks from the other categories we have seen so far, the operator blocks are not used by themselves, but within other blocks. Their oval or hexagonal shape implies which blocks they can be combined with. The most commonly used operator blocks are the ones for performing the basic math functions of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, the blocks for comparing conditions such as less than, greater than, or equal to, and blocks for logical operators such as AND, OR, as well as NOT. The dark orange category is for variables. At the start of a new project, there are no blocks in this category, but from here you can create variables or make lists of variables that can be written to and read from in multiple places in the program. We have not yet needed to use these for our programs. The red category represents my blocks, which we use a lot in our programs. My blocks are a tool that combine one or more programming blocks into a single customized red block. They are useful for creating repeatable program sections that can be used in multiple places in a program to simplify it. Details on how to create MyBlocks will be part of an upcoming tutorial. Now that we have shown you the different categories and blocks we find the most useful, let's briefly look at how to build a program. Assemble programs by dragging and dropping blocks from the quick access bar onto the canvas. When a gray outline of one of the new blocks appears underneath the previous block, let go of the mouse button and the block will snap into place. This creates a stack. Most of the events category blocks are start blocks for individual programs that have to be at the top of the stack of blocks. They have a rounded shape at the top that nothing can attach to. Place blocks that define settings for the whole program at the beginning, like which ports the drive motors are connected to or what the circumference of the wheels you're using is. The stop block from the control category is the only block shaped to be the last block in the stack or program. This is an example of what a simple program could look like. It sets the movement motors to ports B and F and the movement speed to 35%. Then the robot drives straight for one wheel rotation, turns sharp right, moves straight another 1.5 rotations, turns sharp left, continues straight for another rotation, then moves the attachment motor clockwise by 75 degrees, backs up, turns, and drives towards the starting position. 
most first LEGO League challenge missions can be solved by stringing blocks like these together and varying the parameters in the individual blocks. Now you are ready to start exploring the software yourself and start programming on your own. Good luck! Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions.